Oh, there you go. Hi. <laughs> Wait a minute, that's the SV Dallas theme song. Oh yeah, you're right. Watch till the end to find out how I sound without autotune. The past year, at least, we spent our time bound to land and tied up in marinas. The few hours we did sail were so few, we sometimes wondered if living on a sailboat still made sense. But this is about to change. Finally, we will cast the lines, hoist those sails, and start our odyssey. All day, every day, through the night, day in, day out, on our 36 foot, very well equipped nutshell. Subscribe and join us on the high seas. We're going places. It's my child on the road, and there's a car coming. We can't put oranges and lemons together. The first lemon now is already completely funny. And they were really good because I had picked them. So what did you get? Um, today we uh, we wanted to test the water maker. Yeah. And instead we went to a fishing store, got a spear gun and a lure. You got a spear gun? Yeah, I had a full set of uh, fishing, uh, fishing rod. Yeah. <laughs> so what are your plans? You're um, going to learn how to spear thought, fishes? Catching fish is more important than making water. <laughs> also, and Andy said, like he has ways of convincing people to do so. So he said there's going to be pirates. Do you do, right? Well, yeah, he's so talking he... about the economics of it. A spear gun is going to be useful for spear fishing, and if we get any pirates, try to board the boat. Hmm. So that could save your life. And that was like what 60, 70, 70. euros. That's seventy euros well spent. <laughs> and um, yeah, the fishing rod is for catching tuna that Alex won't eat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm still kind of on the fence. Yeah, but you and, might start and, like, tuna. and then he started. But a tuna, if you catch one, it's 400 bucks. Easy. And I thought, that makes Actually, sense. That's a just catch one? That makes sense. It's a business investment. It's not just yeah. a fishing rod. <laughs> that's a money maker. And then oh. I said, well, I won't buy a tuna for 400 bucks. And then he came up with another excuse, and then I bought it. So how is uh, the list going? <laughs> Can you ask a different question? Hello. I made it back. It took a while. Hi, Clevo. I got all the laundry done. It was a lot more than I thought it was, but I have it washed and dried, halfway folded. Now I just clean up and food. Then uh, I think we're ready, right? Each year, thousands of boats sail across the Atlantic. The monohull record stands at roughly 5.5 days. The first trip ever in 1492 took about five weeks. <laughs> like, are the cruise ships also doing that? Did you get Malaga? Yeah. That's really cool. But there's no fireworks. Where's the fireworks, guys? The average boat will probably take about three to four weeks. Four weeks at sea sounds like an incomprehensibly long time to a lot of people. And it is a long time, especially if your boat is only 36 foot and you plan to cross the Atlantic with three people and a six month old baby. But the challenge might not be the crossing itself. The challenge lies in feeling prepared enough to toss the lines and start that journey. The past year we have been working our butts off to get the boat in that comfortable to leave state. At last, we are on our final stretch to leaving Europe behind. I'm ready. Right. Yeah, I'm ready too. I'm ready, I'm ready. Ready? Really? It's kind of weird, isn't it? I think so. Yeah. Last time we just cast off lines because we, were, we needed to get out. We yeah, 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 because we were, we're trying to catch the tide. We were also trying to catch the, the light. The tide and the light yeah. because we left at like sunset. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ah. Uh, yeah, I think we're ready. The boat feels ready. Yeah, let's uh, fill up water. Yeah, nice. And electricity gone. Clean up the last few things and then that's it. It doesn't feel when real yet though. No, when it? there's dust on the, uh, on the uh, 220 cable, when you take it off, you know you've been too long. <laughs> then we're gonna be off. First we're gonna go to Cape Verde though. 
Are you ready to? Yeah? Are you ready to go, Pepper? Yeah. You got your hat? Oh, look. He has a blister on his toe from jumping in a jolly jumper. A few last minute things to do. Uh, filling up tanks, cleaning up the last pieces of rubbish. And then we are uh, gonna go, guys. It's time. We are finally tossing the line. We're gonna go to Cape Verde first. So it'll be a six, seven day trip. And then we're gonna go continue on to Martinique most likely, but we split it up in two. So the first seven days are coming up and we're excited. Are you excited too? Oh. This is how you know that you've been in a marina too long too. Your wheel hasn't been on for weeks. Preparing to sail? Yeah. Are you gonna be good? One of the problems we've had for a long time where they haven't been fixed, like the slide is falling out now, huh? No, it's still falling out. Still a problem. Ah, we only spent about a year working on the boat, but that one we didn't do. It doesn't feel entirely real yet that we're leaving. We've just been running like crazy in the past few weeks. I went to bed at like two every night, got up at eight, and just worked all day in between trying to get Levy to sleep, which I'm trying now too. The only thing that works at the moment is walking up and down the pontoon with him in the carrier, which is going to be interesting once we're out there. He's been a really good boy, but for the past few days, he's been really cry. So I don't know what's going on there. I'll be really happy when we toss the lines because then it means it's the end of boat jobs. It's the end of cleaning up things that don't have a space. And, uh, you know, it's just going to be sailing, making sure Levi's happy, cooking watching the water, listening to podcasts. Just look forward to it so much. It's been too long since we've really sailed, so I'm ready. Cool and filled up? Yeah? Yeah. How much did you get in? 200 milliliters, something like that. So really it's just the heat exchanger then? It was seemed empty. Yeah, yeah, just the heat exchanger. You could hear, you could hear it bubbling and filling up. Yeah. Right, I said it's probably just through evaporation because when you're on your engine for a long time, some of it just evaporates. All oh, right. Yeah, that could that makes sense. Yeah, like in the summer when I was in the Balearics, I think I lost about 300 milliliters over the over the few months because so I were motoring a lot. Yeah, good so, to know. Yeah, pretty normal. We never check that ever. It's a good thing to check. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> This is it, we're really going. The most surreal feeling, knowing we won't be back here, probably ever, venturing into an ocean and into a life that we only know from YouTube videos. Now we're writing our own story. We are starting what will probably be the biggest achievement of our lives. Years of preparations, thousands of euros, 94 YouTube videos for this moment and all that follow, hoping that it will be exactly what we dreamed of. The life that all those sailing channels portray. Sharks, whales, mahi, lobster, tuna, squalls, trade winds, adventure. Lefi had a good timing for his nap today. He decided to fall asleep as soon as we tossed the lines. And since I messed up a little bit driving out, because it was really tight and the wind was pushing our bow to the wrong side, um, Alex had to take over the steering and things got a bit difficult. So I quickly put him down and he looks at me and thank God he stayed asleep. So let's hope he sleeps for the first hour and uh, we can get the sails up and we can get everything running because it's just nice be able to do that without a crying baby in your arms. How does that feel? A bit stressful, huh? I was going to say, that's probably like the worst departure I've ever had on a boat. That was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what more could have gone wrong? Yeah. Well, we, we could have hit something. Yeah, we almost ripped a cleat off. We almost probably banged into three boats. Yeah. <laughs> the main got caught on the reef in line. That was great. Right. That was a really good one. Do we want to put the rudder on, the hydro vane, before we, we have a lot of speed? Make sure he doesn't drop overboard. Do you have no phones in your pocket that you can lose? It'd be very inconvenient if we lose the rudder now. <laughs> you got the most important job on the boat, Andy. 
grabbing your husband's ass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a big boat coming. Right, someone needs to pull the, the tether line. So it stays in. Yep, thank you. Well done. Five minutes out and I'm hungry. Does he have a fun fuzzy eye? Yeah. Both sides? Both, yeah. Oh, no. Poor little guy. What's happening? Uh, we got the white smoke out of the, the engine. Out of the engine. It's a good way to start. Yeah, let's bring in the, the door. There's a little chart in here which just goes through different uh, different colour different colour smoke in your exhaust and then how you trace it back. Right, white smoke, air in fuel lines, dirty fuel, okay, piston, no, dry cylinder valves. No, you can't really tell with these. I do have another idea. Just the feeling that the prop may be dirty, which makes the engine work harder than it had to and therefore also not reach full wide open throttle revs. Believe it or not, boat engines are not that strong. They're tough, but for our boat, 29 horsepower is sufficient to reach the maximum speed. Have a look yourself. You may say that it could be an issue. You may say we're slacking for not cleaning the prop before a major ocean crossing. Well, I'd say subscribe to find out later in the show when we are in the middle of the Atlantic. So we got white smoke coming out of the exhaust and we're not really sure what it is. They also can't rev up all the way. So something might be wrong with the fuel. We just put some into the tank hoping if it is something like diesel blood it will kill anything that's in there um, we're not really sure what it is and we've just pulled up into an anchorage a bit more down south um, see if we can anchor but it doesn't look very nice it's very rocky it's very swelly we only have to motor for about three hours i think until we hit some winds and then uh, we can sail all the way down. So we think we can, we can risk it. The guys just checked out the engine. Yeah, we noticed when we were um, just bringing the fishing line in that there was a little bit too much white smoke coming out of the exhaust. Um, not an uncomfortable amount, but just a little bit too much and the smell was a bit too strong. Um, there's a couple of things that it possibly could be. We noticed that the engine under load isn't going over 2,600 revs, um, which suggests that there might be a problem with the engine getting fuel and um, we didn't really have any issues when we were on the dock uh, we had the engine running for like 15 minutes or so and uh, like we weren't really smelling much and we did rock about a bit then so we think we just might have um, a little bit of dirt in the fuel and it's clogged up and clogged up one of the filters um, 
the engine is running perfectly. I've got the same engine. It's an MD2030, so I know exactly how it sounds when it's at a certain time, a certain amount of revs, and it does sound fine. So we're going to um, we're going to get out there and sail. <laughs> we're just going to turn the engine off. That's the safest thing to do. Let's go find some wind. been on shift for about an hour now and it is uh, really great sailing. I think we've, uh, we've been on the way for about 12 hours with 55 nautical miles so we've been doing a chill drive it's not too much we're doing about four and a half knots at the moment and the seas are really not big it's really comfortable sailing it's also the first sailing I've done in the first 12 hours. Maybe it took some time, falling asleep, I needed some attention, is a bit restless at the moment. It's really different sailing with Navy. I need to spend a lot of time on the deck and I don't get to pull as many lines as I used to. Which is a shame. I really enjoyed that part. Mm -hmm. By now, we are away from the islands and we get constant wind, albeit on a beam reach. This season, the trade wind situation is a bit confused and we had to wait quite a while to find a weather window. And even with waiting, it will turn out not to be ideal. For now though, it's quite peaceful. The tape that we put on, you know, to cover the rip, yeah. when we were coming, it's still on. Yeah. Like, that's held up really well. That's really good. We're testing our shift schedule, which is three hour shifts during the day, four hour shifts during the night. This way, we rotate the graveyard shift so it's not always the same person doing it. We try to arrange our schedule that matches Levi's, so Mandy can wake up for the kid and then takes over her shift, and at the end, look after Levi before sleep. I haven't filled much. Um, it is almost noon on our first full day. Yeah. To be honest... We've been on the way for 22 hours. <laughs> 20, 20 hours. 20. We've been beam reaching and the waves hit us from three quarters. And for, for Mandy and for me it's a bit tough to get used to it. I was able to get some biodramine, which is anti-seasickness. But Mandy can't because she's still breastfeeding and she's just beat. I might decide to do take one. I mean, he pooped now, and the reason I didn't want to give him bottled milk is because he didn't poop. But maybe now that he did, I might take one tomorrow or something because of that way. Yeah. Because this is horrible. I took a second one two hours ago. She doesn't know. Oh, I did not know, I know. Yeah, now I do feel better. Also, now we're having lunch, so we go dead downwind, and the waves from behind behind work really nicely. That's just. Yeah, following seas. Great. Yeah, so I think once we're on the uh, Caribbean route, it's going to be nicer. The wind's going to stay like that for 80% of the trip. Um, yeah, but conditions further are great. Just hope to get on a different course. Honestly, I like you all have these romantic things when you're on the water and you cook and you have so much time to do to do lunch and dinner and catch fish and. This. But yeah, I think we'll get there. But. Today, not yet. The body often needs like two, three days to adjust. He, he's not having a problem adjusting, he's just happy. And he's learning so much about cooking, guys. <laughs> <laughs>
don't raise expectations. These are all the things that make marriage work. <laughs> I know the only reason you're still watching is you want to find out how I made the song and if I could actually sing. The answer is, I can't. It's auto-tune. To be honest, music is not difficult. You just need to have the right instruments and press the right buttons and then your computer does the rest. The fun thing is vocals. I've never done that before. Enjoy! Alright, check this. That's sitars doing a pattern and then the sub bass kicks in. Boop, boop. That's amazing. And then the next one is trapdoor, drum kit. Boop, boop, and then the song starts and that's the vocals right there. And the trick is to triple or quadruple all the vocals and then you put on autotune. But let me turn it off. Let me know in the comments which song I should butcher next. See you next week. Bye.